Good morning. Welcome to today's adventure with Slow Ride Guide. We got a real interesting scenario playing out today. A lot of changes in the weather coming. We've been talking about that in previous episodes, weather patterns and such. So today, it's very much a prefrontal day. There's a big weather uh, change coming this evening. It's an interesting conversation, an interesting topic that comes up in conversation on fishing scenarios on fronts and frontal passages, temperature changes and wind changes and how the fish react to that. It's the fish live in the natural world. They sense changes. They have an ability to know when things are coming. So sometimes they will react to that. And it's a matter of putting those changes together with the areas that you choose to fish. So today we have high tides for most of the week. We still have, we're just like two days past the full moon, which is always kind of tough for me, but we have a lot of things in our favor as well. We're out here early this morning, a nice little boat ride, not too far from the marina. And we're getting started drifting some shallow flats, grass beds, sand holes, throwing top waters. But this evening, like four or five o'clock, we're scheduled to have a huge major change in the weather. The temperature is going to drop 40 degrees tomorrow. So we've been in the 80s this week and it's going to be in the 40s starting tomorrow. So big change coming in the weather, definite an obvious pattern. Some of them are more obvious, some of them are not. This one is a big one. So we're going to spend some time fishing today. I got Jamie on the front with me. She's up there casting and we thank you guys for joining us today and we're going to see how this one plays out. The natural world that the fish live in, they sense changes in the weather. I've had a lot of interesting conversations with great anglers over the years, whether it's people who just live their life out here, but I also have some biologist friends who want to put the science into that program. They try to make it logical on why those things happen. So what happens when the weather changes, a shift in the wind direction, a change in the cloud cover, slight changes in the temperature, which really doesn't affect the water dramatically or doesn't affect the water temperatures instantly. It takes a little bit of time for the water temperature to change. But what happens under the water is you have the complete bottom of the food chain, which is plankton and little tiny animals that when there's cloud cover or when there's darkness, those tiny organisms swim to the top of the water column. When the sun is bright, those things go down. It happens in the oceans, it happens in the bays, it happens in every body of water. It has a way of spurring the food chain. The food chain just kicks it into gear. So hopefully a, that plays into our advantage today because we do have some cloud cover starting to build. We had east and almost northeast wind most of this week. Today, as the front nears, it starts to turn to the south. It starts drawing the wind off of the Gulf and it has a distinct change. It has a very different feel. And if we can feel it above the water, it definitely has a feel under the water. Those fish are tuned into their environment. They sense things are changing and it will, you know, hopefully spur a little feeding, uh, a little feeding frenzy as we lead up to that change. You had a follower out there? And we're just getting started here this morning. We've already had a couple follows, a couple lazy fish, and that has been the pattern most of this week. We've had a lot of fish that are inquisitive, that will come up and look at the lure, that will follow it, but they just didn't have that killer instinct. I mean, we mixed in a few nice fish, but there were more lazy fish than ones that were on the prowl, that were really feeding. So. 
really just got started been out here about 10 minutes this morning had a couple of lookers and it's going to be very interesting to see how the rest of this day plays out Right here in the middle of the action today, Jamie hooked up a nice red fish. There he is. He ate it. He's on. Yeah. Oh. Come on. Come on. Come on. Too much. Just pressure. No, real, 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 real. Just don't let it go slack. Feels good. Now, real, little bit. A little pressure. Fighting it around the boat. Went round and round a couple times. Crazy feisty fish today full of energy and then unfortunately this one got off at the side of the boat we were all happy smiling about ready to take that picture in my mind i was taking pictures already but the hook came loose on that one The sun has kind of came out. It's really different from earlier this morning with the clouds. The clouds have kind of broke through. We're still anticipating a big front coming in later this evening. We do got a couple hours of good fishing though before the weather really turns bad on us this evening and tomorrow's probably gonna be out. We're looking at a 40 degree drop in temperature. Wind's gonna be blowing 20 miles an hour. So really, um, really different conditions for tomorrow but got one hooked up got some great action a lot of blow ups when these fish hit on top the hook set is always questionable a redfish a redfish's mouth is on the bottom of their head so the blow up is very dramatic they come on top of the lure they roll when they hit it so the hook can be very questionable. The fight is not random and arbitrary. The fish fills that hook. They turn right to left. They fill it on this side. They kick around a couple times. They turn to the other side, they kick, and they actually work at getting that hook out of their face. They shake it out of there. It's not just a random fight where they're going. That's a, it's a contrived effort to get that hook out. So if you don't have a deep hook set, if it's not buried in the bone somewhere, a couple right turns, a couple left turns, and they just give it right back to you. When you're fighting that big redfish, you want to keep the pressure on, but we do this with light tackle. We're doing this with 10 pound line. So you can't horse those fish. You can't overpower them. You're never going to beat them down and drag them to the boat. So it's like a shock absorber. You have to have a great rod with some giving action. You have to have faith in your knots that you tied. You want to keep those things fresh. But when you're fighting that fish, you keep the pressure on. When you get a chance to make line, when you get a chance to bring it in, you bring them in. When that fish turns and decides to go the other direction, you have to let them go. You have to be patient. And then there's times they're just going to stand their ground. They're just going to be where they're going to be and you keep pressure on that fish until you get them to turn their head and come back to the boat. And it's always easier at the boat if you wear them out out there on the perimeter. If they get close to the boat, they go under the boat move. They go back there by the motor. If the troll motor's down, that's an issue for cutoffs. So everything you can do to wear the fish out, out there on the perimeter before they get to the side of the boat is gonna be a huge help in getting them to your hand. Always a heartbreaker whenever they get away. This place is strewn with broken hearts. I've said that forever, but just think about how happy the fish is about it. So it's kind of a conflict of emotions. Fish is happy, we're not so much. And we drifted through some nice little action there. Jamie missed another one. I missed a couple fish, then finally got hooked up on a great red. Just going, going. Ooh. Hey, Jamie, grab that yeah. net. Come up here. 
after the short strikes, after the get offs, I kept pressure on that fish, battled it around the boat a couple times. It did make a couple good runs on me, but the trick to that is holding pressure, don't overpower them, and when they're ready, you bring that fish to the boat. We thought it was going to the front of the boat, then we thought it was going to the back of the boat, and then it went under the boat, and it went around the boat. Jamie was awesome on the net, came up to the side, got that fish, a uh, victory for us, and then, of course, it's always nice to release a couple fish back. We've been letting them go all week. We're gonna put this one in the cooler, and we're gonna keep a couple fish today. We have a hook them and cook them episode coming up in the future, where we're gonna do a couple recipes. Everybody likes to enjoy their catch, and it's always fun to share that stuff. A lot of times, you know, people talk about how to cook this fish. It comes up in conversation on the boat. So we're gonna add some hook them and cook them episodes and show you guys the recipes that we enjoy. On our first hook them and cook them episode, we're gonna do a black and red fish with a crawfish train sauce. One of my favorites, experimented with it a few times and I'm looking forward to sharing it with all, to sharing it with everybody that has been uh, enjoying the show with us. So we got a nice drift here. We're gonna give this about 10 or 15 more minutes and then we're gonna double back. We kind of drifted out of the mullet and the bait fish. As we moved along, that became somewhat sparse. So part of the process is knowing when to turn back, when to keep drifting. Sometimes it's just a sense. As you're looking at the water, the action starts to fade away and you just do a big circle back and head for the areas where you last saw fish, where you saw bait fish, and then hopefully they're hanging around there. None of this is etched in stone. It doesn't mean they're gonna be there when you get back. These fish have tails. They know how to use them. But if there's an area that's holding some bait fish, you're gonna hopefully find some of the bigger predatory species that remain in that area for the duration of the morning. We're gonna keep on fishing, stick with us. We're gonna check back in and let you know how this day plays out for us. All right, guys, hooked up. Hooked up on a beauty. We're going round and round. This fish, top water's been the trick today. They didn't all bite, but this is a good one. This is a heavy fish. It's gonna make a couple wraps around the boat. We got Jamie, she's up front. She's on net duty. Uh, we're going south again. Almost had this fish to the boat, but it looks like it's deciding. It didn't want to, he saw me smiling. They don't like to see me happy. But it's at this point, when you got a good fish hooked up, you start thinking about your knots. You start thinking about how long that's been on there. I mean, this is tackle being tested to its maximum. 10 pound line, fluorocarbon leader, top water spook junior. And this guy is full of energy. Plus this time of year, the water temperature has got these fish just feisty. They have a lot of energy in cooler water. And when they get close to the boat, it's advantage fish. There's not a lot of shock absorption in the line. You wanna use the rod. All right, here we go. Oh, nice, nice. Red-headed, top water, Spook Junior, FTU Green Rod, Shimano Reel. It's a great combination. We had a beautiful morning, beautiful day. We talked a little bit about the prefrontal stuff that's going on. We still got a couple hours. I mean, the weather is not that close to us yet, but we had a good example, some beautiful fish drifting, the wind picked up a little bit, just kind of normal conditions. Southeast breeze for us today. We are blessed in deep South Texas with some amazing weather for the next three months. So in spite of tomorrow, we're gonna take a little break. Then we're gonna be shooting more episodes along the way. And it's gonna be interesting to share 
the changes in the weather, the transitions as we move along. It's going to be a big part of the show, explaining the seasons, talking about how things change, and how we fish through those conditions. So we certainly do appreciate you stopping by. Awesome to have Jamie on the boat with us today. Had a great little fishing trip, and these fish are gonna be the star of the show at dinner tonight. And we are very conservation-minded here at the Slow Ride Guide. We release a lot of fish. You see a lot of fish go back in the water, but we also like to enjoy a fish dinner. A big part of our future episodes are gonna be the hook and cook. We're gonna close the lid on another adventure. We got fish in the cooler. We're gonna make it to the marina a little early today. We do have some weather on the horizon. We had a great day. We made it back to the marina. Thank you for watching, appreciate you tuning in. We're gonna clean some fish. We're gonna chill out now, take a little break this evening. Thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next episode.